Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome to what should probably be the final episode of XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough. Today, we will finally and hopefully prove that you can beat XCOM 2 Valkyrie. XCOM 2 Valkyrie? No. XCOM 2 War of the Chosen with only female soldiers. Aside from that one time we were forced to use uh, that weird half man, half alien hybrid thingy. But the alien fortress mission. We need to assault the alien fortress. There's 31 aliens on this ship and probably a lot more because of that final battle. Um, there's Mutons, Gatekeeper, Chrysalid, Archon, Kodak, Sectopod and Ramadan Sector. So basically everybody, uh, everything that's very, very bad for your health. Uh, and I'm guessing there might even be, yeah, everything of the other uh, types of enemies as well. Um, not that many robotic enemies, so that's important to note. So only the Codex, Sectopod and the second part of the Andromedon are gonna be robotic. But let's see about the team. There we go, we give Erika the Icarus armor. Nearly unlimited freedom of movement in combat. Just watch where you land. Okay, this is gonna be it, the final team for the final mission. Let's hope this works out okay. So we're pulling out all the stops. We're taking Emily and Heidi, both as a ranger. Emily with, of course, a normal, fully expanded shotgun and the fusion blade, but with the Wraith armor, so she can have the grappling hook as well, and the blue screen rounds. Heidi goes with her standard outfit, so the Viper suit, and the assassin weapons with the Talon rounds, which should maximize her damage as well. Then we're taking two sharpshooters as well. We're taking Christina with the dragon rounds and all of her fancy pistol abilities. She also got a very upgraded uh, sniper rifle now with superior scope, superior expanded magazine, and autoloader. Um, and the uh, hazmat suit for some extra protection. Then we have Erica with the Icarus armor. She has an immense amount of aim complemented with the tracer rounds and a mimic beacon she can drop anywhere because of the Icarus suit, which should come in handy as well. Then we have Kelly as our specialist. The increased hacking abilities, it's not as high as I would have liked it, but at least she's a very good healer. She has a skull jack and a med kit as long as as long along the little along with the disruptor rifle from one of the chosen and then finally we have Jacqueline Morel with the rage suit the shred storm cannon a frost bomb and the acid bomb dumped in the double slot so this is gonna be it this is the team for our final mission of this entire run through let's hope this works out okay here we go come on ladies There. I've infused this material with the entirety of our viable Elder DNA. We won't get another chance at this. Final connection is set. Power levels adequate. One more look at the Shen, buffer. Watch you go over this thing 50 times. Take a breath. We are ready. And there we go, taking control of our very own avatar. Ha <laughs> ha! I love this final mission. It is freaking awesome. This is nearing completion. Now, Lily. Initiating network connection. Give him hell. Fuck yeah! Gate is primed and ready, sir. Patch me through. All right, people. The world got its wake-up call. And now they know the truth. Advent is a lie. And their time is up. They've got a full-fledged war on their hands now. While the aliens struggle to contain our world, we're gonna make a move on theirs. It won't be easy. But you're used to that. What was needed. You never gave up the fight. You are XCOM. And you're gonna end this. Humanity is counting on us, people. Good luck, Commander. Thanks, Bradford. Ooh, I always get the shivers when that starts. Here we go, people. 
And there we go. An active psionic gate on the other side. Okay. Stay alert. No way of knowing if they detect our presence yet. I think they do. Such loss. Such need is waste. You force our hand. Yet still, we offer peace. Rejoin us, and your world will be spared. There we go, our first taunt from the ethereal. And we have our seven person squad. Um, so canonically, and, and my playthrough, the commander is female, by the way, if you're wondering, because I can't change anything about that. Um, but yeah, now we're a seven person squad, a seven Valkyrie squad. And this is going to be one hell of a mission. Um, as we saw before, 31 enemies, so we're going to have to take this slow. And I might even split this up into two episodes. But um, yeah, let's get into it. Let's move up. And we got our first batch of enemies. Four mutants immediately. I just moved one, uh, one person and I moved up with the avatar. And I need to be careful because the avatar needs to survive all of this. So uh, let's uh, kick some ass. So the Icarus armor, I have two charges for the Icarus jump. So I'm definitely not going to use that now. But uh, yeah, it seems like I can probably just jump to any location. Oh, wow. That basically works like a teleport. That is going to be very, very interesting. But let's just first start shooting. Because um, these mutants ooh, are just powerful enough to survive a sniper rifle shot. Which means that we'll first need to soften them up with a few shots from Christina. Um, they all have two armor. I could do face off, but for just two targets that's not gonna help. I could probably kill one as well. So let's immediately be, be very aggressive. We need to run and gun with Heidi. And then move her up to the corner here. We might spot something else. That is the risk I'm taking here. Uh, and I don't know what's happening. The game is freezing up on me again. There we go. Heidi goes up. And that is... Yeah, only four enemies. So that should be... Oh, what the hell? Okay. Okay. Things are getting very real all of a sudden. That is six chrysalids. Six chrysalids and a gatekeeper. I don't have the movement speed anymore to do anything about that. So let's just fire at this muton and kill him around the corner here. Remember that rangers have blade storms, so any attack from the chrysalids are not going to work if I just remember to put everybody close enough. Now, so right now we only see two enemies, and both of them are in pretty good cover from Christina's vantage point here. Um, I could try a lightning hand shot at one, probably the 57% one. That seemed to miss. So then I think I'm gonna go for... I could fire the pistol. No, because I moved up already. So I would need to use fanfire. I'm gonna try and use fanfire on the muton on the right there. So 357% shots. That's a kill. Okay. Good. Uh, I have an extra move with Heidi, but I'm not going to do that. I'm, instead, I'm going to move up with Emily. And try and kill another muton. So we killed two mutons. And I'm going to have to check who is not in range for the uh, sniper rifle. Because I think I killed one of the two mutons that Erica could spot. So I'm going to have to take a look. Over here, I see three enemies, including a chrysalid, but that's the muton and the gatekeeper. I can even spot the gatekeeper from over here. Okay, no problem just yet. I think I'm going to fire on that muton. I have a 10% chance at a critical, but I think even with that eye, I have an 80% chance to hit that muton with that eye. So let's do that. 80% is pretty good, and it kills it if we hit. There we go. Lowest damage, but we did hit the split there. Um, then Emily can go for a shot on the muton over here, which should kill it. There we go. Okay. How many is that now? 
We're set up pretty good now. I'm gonna move up with Jacqueline. Let's see if we can't fire at anything close by. Doesn't seem like it. And I think I'm gonna just move back the commander's avatar into full cover here. And then put Kelly a bit closer as well to try and give ourselves an overwatch shot. I should probably spread out some people so we don't get hit with a... Uh, yeah, a gate. What's it called? The ability? Nah, never mind. I'll just move up. Absolutely. So, Kelly will probably not see anything from over there, so we're gonna put it on Overwatch as well. And our two... I could put... Yeah, I'm gonna put Heidi on the other side of the door here, so she can Bladestorm every chrysalid that passes by. There we go. So they all have tactical analysis. We spotted them, so they only have one turn to m do something. That's probably going to be the biggest problem for the gatekeeper. And most of the chrysalids won't be able to reach the back row. Uh, we do get a shot. But remember, we have Untouchable for that. So that is perfect. Is that all you got? Indeed. Is that all you got? Then the first chrysalid moves up. They might not even be able to reach our rangers. Which is interesting. We got a, an overwatch shot from Jacqueline here. Which should take out the chrysalis, probably. No, we missed. Okay. It almost looked like we hit the gatekeeper in the back there, but... Uh, and we get another overwatch shot from Kelly. That's a miss, but I think that two damage is going to be enough for uh, one of our blade storms to hit. Chrysalids are going along the side, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. Okay. That's not a problem at all. And remember, with all of that, that's up to 11 enemies already, if we can manage to kill them all, that is. You have such blind hatred for us. We cannot understand it. Our intentions for your world were never hostile. They are still... You are a part of us. They actually expect us to buy any of this? More distrust. Perhaps we will find more reassurance in our ways if... Heading out. If what? If what? Ethereal don't leave us hanging with just an if. If what? Um. So, lots of enemies. Six chrysalids still, because we didn't kill any of them. Uh, and, and I did count at the beginning of this. Um, do we get a shot at... Ooh, wow, that gatekeeper has a lot of a lot of everything now, doesn't it? Um, I could try and move up, but I think that's going to bring us a bit too close to whatever else is going on. Um, does Erica have a shot on the gatekeeper? She actually does, but because of the huge amounts of armor... That's not going to help us too much. So I think the first thing that we need to do is get Jacqueline closer. Probably not the best option here, but Jacqueline over here. We probably don't see the gatekeeper yet, but we do have saturation fire, um, which we can aim. And that won't reach the gatekeeper, sadly. Um, I could fire it like this. Fire on all targets in a cone. That is going to drain half of my minigun, but yeah, seems like a very good option. It's basically a, a, a worse version of the Shredstorm cannon. So let's just fire this. Saturation de la zone. And we kill one of the chrysalids. And that's about it. Let's move up with the... The commander as well. I feel like we can kill one of those chrysalids with the commander. So let's move her up to the next uh, bit. And we can spot that one chrysalid that's still alive and whack it from over here. There we go. Why does the commander speak alien all of a sudden? That's a bit weird. We still have a shot on that gatekeeper. If we want to do... Do we actually have a rupture shot on... No, we don't. No, 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 we don't. Uh, I think I'm going to move up with Erica. I'm going to have to, I think. I can still fire the pistol at 
at that one chrysalid, but I think I want to kill the chrysalids with the ladies over here. Um, and the gatekeeper is really far away. So I'm going to have to try and lure it over. Um, so, first things first, Emily on the side here. Finally! Because there is a chrysalid trying to get closer here. And we see the rest of the chrysalids here as well, which is good, I suppose. So let's just fire a weapon at this chrysalid. And that doesn't kill it. That's going to be annoying. That is actually really annoying. Um, okay. I think we will be able to kill this one. Although, no, because we don't get the criticals. Chrysalids are really, really resilient against criticals. So, I think the safest thing is going to be a pistol shot from Casina first. So, now it's burning it. Don't let dodge in. But, uh... This should be a kill. That didn't sound like a kill. Oh, God. Ooh, that is not good. Because that means we don't have untouchable on any of our... Damn. On any of our uh, rangers there. We still have a shot over here. I could try. But it's not going to be much. It's going to be four damage tops. Whew. Okay, I think... I'm gonna go into kill zone. So if anything moves and tries to get around, I think if I put the kill zone around here, she should get a nice shot on everything. And then Kelly can go into Overwatch as well. Ooh, this is worse than I thought. I thought I was gonna be able to kill most of the chrysalids here, but no such luck. There goes the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper might actually try and hit multiple people now. Six armor, two damage. It moves up, does it? Ooh, yeah, it gets another shot. But that's probably gonna miss, yeah. One damage on the miss. And we get... Ah, that's too bad that we didn't get untouchable. Because that's only gonna hit, yeah. That actually killed all the chrysalids. So the chrysalids are actually backing off. Six damage on Emily it's, is not that bad. Uh, and it's open now, the gatekeeper, so we can blast it with a shotgun. Probably Emily's shotgun, because Emily has shredding on a shotgun. Um, okay, the chrysalids moving around is a bit annoying, but Emily's armor has not been taken out, I think, because that doesn't do any shredding. Oh, we don't even have armor, never mind. So let's move up with... Emily. Yeah, let's put it over here. And that should give us 88% on a rapid fire shot is 73%. So double double hit. That's one hit. And the shredding. I don't think it closes up in between those shots. Nope. And we got a double shot. Yeah, there goes the gatekeeper. Whoo! Uh I don't think it wants more. I don't think it wants more. Uh, so that means we only have chrysalids to contend with now. Which means that we can also move up with our snipers. So let's go over here. And I think, yeah, Erica has that ability where she hunkers down automatically. Then gains extra aim and an overwatch shot in one go. So that's really, really good. Christina can go over here. And go into overwatch. Let's put it on the in... No, no, I'm going to put it on the corner here. Just in case one of the chrysalids tries to hit Christina over here. So this should be enough. Uh, Kelly. I could probably use Kelly to heal Emily, right? Yeah, there we go. Let's do that first. It's six damage, so from the maximum of eight we can heal. It's definitely worth it, so she doesn't die from a critical. Six HP healed, and then we can move up. Because again, um, Kali also gets an Overwatch shot for free, I think. If she, if she uh, just moves around. Now, Jacqueline has free reload, so I don't need to worry about that. So let's put it over here. And put it on Overwatch as well. Okay, so apparently the Chrysalids really fucked off. Because we're in the next turn and nothing happened. Okay, then I'll guess we'll move up with the... 
uh, the rangers here. We moved, we removed pretty much all the uh, the cover over here. But Rolling. moving up with Heidi through the window to lure some more aliens over here because I know there's plenty more in the next room. So we should probably try and get everybody inside of this room before we uh, move any further. Let's put Emily right next to Heidi over here on the sides and move everybody to the right side. I'll get back to you when something happens. So another turn further, nothing seems to happen, so we're going to move up and we'll spot the next batch of enemies. Or a chrysalid, but he's going to get hit by a blade. There we go. Oh, that doesn't kill it. Ooh, that doesn't kill it. Damn it. Chrysalid poison as well. That's not good, so we need to move up with Heidi if we do that. Because there's a few more available over here. Uh, so if I move over here. That is annoying. Didn't expect that to happen. Uh, nothing got hit there. But we should use the health kit. We're going to run out of healing really quickly like this. Go patch them up. We still have restoration as well if needed. But those single health charges are going to be really annoying. But the poison would be ticking down otherwise. So uh, definitely healing all of that. Okay, let's give Emily her well-deserved uh, untouchable. So let's just whack the chrysalid. And now we get a uh, critical. God damn it. Yeah, we saw that a bit too late. But uh, yes, indeed, we saw that. Let's move up because apparently there's no aliens inside over there. So we should be able to just move up. How far does this area reach over here on the side? It's not that far, but I'm not going to take a risk. And just move up. So moving up with Heidi to spot anything else. God damn it. Um, seems like we'll probably have to head into this direction now. Uh, it's been a while since I did this mission. There's multiple buildings around. But no aliens apparently. So uh, again just moving up. Okay let's move Heidi to the sides here. Now we should definitely trigger something. There's one more chrysalid around the field I think. Two Archons. Two Archons, that is absolutely fine. These guys are usually pretty manageable. Um, and we can actually hit them from pretty far away. Let's see about our sniper. We have a few nice shots. There's actually 100% shots. That's really good. So we'll see. We'll leave her as last and we'll see who remains. We actually have really good shots. Oh no, that was with the sniper rifle. The pistol actually has worse percentages here but if we move up we can actually move up over here i might do that i think we'll not be able to see something from over here oh we do we still do so that's good uh so let's do i could just fan fire this archon i could just fan fire this archon if i need it for anything else yeah so be it but there we go i think it's three turns before fan fire returns there we goes uh, we get an ability point, which is completely useless at the moment. Uh, we have a 71 with the shotgun from over there. That is interesting, to say the least. Um, I could go over here with Emily. Oh, please don't trigger that other chrysalid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really mad if that other chrysalid. God damn it! Something under the ground. Yeah, something is under the ground. And blade storm, if that doesn't critical. Oh, thank. Cool. That was, I think, the maximum range of the the blade storm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's at 11 damage. Okay, apparently, according to the game, this is not a flank shot. What do I need to do to kill this thing with a flank shot? <laughs> um, okay, let's just uh, run and gun then, I suppose. Set him up, knock him down. And get a little bit, although that gives me sight inside of the building. Yeah, okay, I'm committing. Oh, Emily. Emily has been taking the brunt of everything lately. And you, oh, god damn, we see something. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Well, that just fucked everything up. And that was a noise I just made. I can't initiate Reaper anymore because we're too far from any targets. Oh, damn, this is going to be a massacre. What else do we see with the sniper rifle? 
We see a codex. A codex and the Archon. With that I can actually hit one of the codexes. I could. But the codexes aren't, aren't usually the problem. I think I might have to use the abilities now. Is this going to be the first time? Yeah, I'm going to have to. So let's do an Icarus jump. To over here. Oh, that's probably not going to even give me sight inside of the building. Because I could go over here. But then what? Because I probably can only see the uh, the Archon over here over there and he already has damn so no icarus jump for me uh that eye that eye on one of the codexes in the back because that's the only thing i can actually hit so that eye that's a kill By the numbers. and we don't get an extra shot okay i think reaper isn't gonna even isn't even gonna help us here Let's just fire my 80% shot with Kali on the Archon. That's 8 damage, that's good. That means that Emily should be able to kill it in one go now. So she can... Ooh, no, 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 no. Damn, but what I can do... Wait a second. Wait a second. I can get her to... Kinda safety. Um... By putting it over here. Yeah, let's do that. Because that doesn't really take an action. And if I want to shoot from over there, I can't. I can't shoot from over here. But I can go into Overwatch. Okay. Can I? I can't dominate from this far away. How much does the Null Lens do? 8 to 11 damage. That's not going to kill it either way. Okay. So then I guess that we need to keep the... Um, yeah, we need to keep the commander safe. So let's move him behind cover over here. And put her, her, her on Overwatch. Um, that's Psionic Dimensional Rift. Yeah, I can't put that far enough. Um, so let's just Overwatch with the commander. Okay, no. We'll use the grapple from the Viper suit to go up. Which gives us height advantage as well, which should upgrade our uh, stats a little bit. Um, so with this, we got a 100% shot and a 50% critical. I'm not going to even risk it, so let's just rapid fire on that Archon. And thank god we did, because we missed the first shot. There we go. Okay, but with the 100% shot, that might have hit, so yeah. That gives her untouchable. Let's keep her over there. And then Jacqueline. Um, Jacqueline should go into full cover over here. And then go onto Overwatch. Oh god, is that all we have left? Um, the one saving grace we have is Tactical Analysis, which should give them only one turn but of course Codexes can still teleport and do an action because teleport doesn't take an action. Here we go. So that's four more, yeah, I think three more Codexes and two more Archons. So that's one Archon, he did move. And he got a shotgun. Not in the face, because we missed that shot. Sadly, that would have been a nice bit of damage already on it. And then, so the Archons aren't going to do anything, because they can't. They can just move and that's it. But the Codexes, that's another can of, can of worms. The Psionic Bomb is going to come in. So weapon unaffected because of untouchable, but of course Christina's is affected. But the pistol isn't going to do much, and those are two movement actions, so we're actually fine. We're actually fine, and that's good. Everything's fine. I'm going to keep saying fine until we're actually fine. Okay. God damn it. So five more enemies that we need to take out. That sounds a bit more doable than what we were first up against. Nothing happens. Uh, the sniper rifle got hit. But I think if I put Christina over here... I don't want to do face-off against codexes, do I? Let's see. Um, how far can Emily go? 
Emily can actually go and flank. Can I flank? Oh, this is such a bad idea. I should be able to flank that one codex, but... Let's move already. Because her weapon was unaffected. So this is not a flank on that codex. But it does have a very high chance hit. Because, oh yeah, right. She has the blue screen rounds. So that's going to be a guaranteed kill on the codex over here. He's the most annoying one to hit, so I'm just going to kill him. Or her, I suppose, because the codex has... A female form. I think saturation fire would be a nice attack here, but it probably doesn't do enough damage to kill the codexes. So I'll probably have to try and take one of them out beforehand. Um, let's move up with the commander as well and see what that bomb can do, because that bomb does a lot of damage. That dimensional rift, um, but it doesn't reach too far actually. Can't really hit anybody with that. And the null lands should be okay. Um, also, also doesn't reach. Great. I put him too far away now. Um, Blackjack, Erica can probably hit something, but the codexes usually don't get to. L yeah, they can't survive all of those shots. I think, you know what, let's put it on kill zone, on this entire area, if any of them move, they're gonna be shot. Christina, we can move her down as well, putting her over here. Ah oh, crap, that overwatch shot, eee. higher elevation, okay they missed. But we do get a move, oh we got a reaction shot, okay then, wow. Erica actually missed that shot. Did that codex actually split up? Because it sounded like it did. I can only see two enemies from over here. Um, and I think... Aha, it's the two Archons. So I'm gonna Lightning Hands one of them. That's actually a hit. Six damage and burning. And then I'm gonna face off to hit the other two. So there we go. Face off against the other two. That's a hit, and that's all sad, uh, that's a great, but no burn damage. Okay, but it is something. Then, Heidi. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to focus on killing those codexes first. Or, how much damage do I do with the sword on a codex? 12 to 11, and they have... 12 health, so that means I can only kill one of them. If I activate Reaper for that and it doesn't work, then I'm basically boned. I'm gonna have to risk it. And another. So let's slash at the first codex. Like this, come on Heidi. 12 damage. 12 damage or more. Ooh. Damn son. Damn girl. Indeed, you got him. Uh, Reaper and Implacable. I think we can kill that other Archon as well now. Yeah, there we go. And that should give us a good position to now kill the uh, Codex with a Shotgun Blast. 94% critical, so that should be it. There we go. Triple kill by Heidi. That's why we're taking... We've, uh, we've taken the Rangers with us, because that's just invaluable. Um... Jacqueline can't see the Archon, which is interesting, but the Archon can't kill Heidi, because Heidi has untouchable at the moment. So let's just move up with... Yeah, she's not going to spot anything either, is she? I could put Kelly over here, but that's going to be basically it. Yeah, no shots from her, no shots from Jacqueline, and no shots from the Commander's Avatar. So let's just put everybody on Overwatch. And see what that final Archon is going to do. We still have an Overwatch shot with Erica as well. She is on kill zone, so if that Archon moves into frame, he's going to get shot as well. There we go. He moves to a rather peculiar direction. He gets hit with 10 damage, and then the cannon hits him as well, but only for 5 damage. I think he might have survived that. He doesn't drop down. Yeah, there he goes. 
And we got another shot from the commander's avatar now. That should, if it hits. Yeah, it hits. Okay. There we go. Second onslaught defeated. Which brings us down to... Have I been counting correctly? So I think we're down to 12 enemies. I think we killed 19 so far. With none of the heavy weapons. We did use most of our abilities. But they can come back. So that's not a problem at all. Okay. And then it turns quiet again. Let's reload Christina. I don't know if that was a free reload. It was. And uh, just get everybody a bit closer and I'll see you guys in a second. And we spot our next batch a few turns later. A sectoid, an archon and two mutons. Unless that sectoid doesn't count. It doesn't seem like it does. Yet. So that means that if we move just a little bit further, there's another... Ooh, yeah. There's another batch of... Are those just four? Because they seem to have the same health bar. Four sectoids. I can deal with that. If that's the problem, I can definitely deal with that. Um, I'm even going to risk this. Yeah, come on, live a little. Tired of waiting around. I'm going to probably regret this, but let's check out what that second pull is. And we spot... Yeah, four sectoids. They do have mind control ability, so we definitely need to kill these fuckers. Um, but they're all... They all have very low health. They have 8 health each, which uh, should allow us to kill them all with just a few sword strikes. And they have a melee vulnerability as well. Right now, I know, I realize that we can't reach them just yet. But... I also have Christina, but she doesn't have face off just yet. Okay. Um, I can hit one of the Archons with a shot from over here. It's not ideal. Um, but we do have Run and Gun back. And Run and Gun can go from up here even. So let's just use Run and Gun. Because we need to kill those uh, mutons. So let's just go over here in the corner with Heidi. Could have probably used the grappling hook to do the same thing without running gun. But uh, there we go. We don't really have flank shots even. Nothing really counts as a flank shot. We see everything from over here, obviously. But uh, let's try and kill this muton. Come on. Mm, that, is, that is painful. Because that means that Heidi is up there without untouchable. I really need to be more careful. Um, I still have a plan for that, though. Because um, right now we're going to be close enough, I think, to give Heidi another action. Advanced teamwork. That gives her another action. Her movement range is so large lately that we can actually hit one of the back sectoids here. So with that melee vulnerability... We should be able to take them out rather efficiently. So, Sectoid 1. There we go. Melee vulnerability. Enemy down. This is dangerous because, of course, we are getting... Oh. I didn't activate Reaper. Okay. Okay. That's not a problem. I can't fire anymore. That's, it is a problem, but, um, now, I could do something else, and it's really risky, because mutons can actually fire back, um, let's try this a little bit differently, blackjack, blackjack, I can hit basically everybody, wait a second, I can hit everybody, um, so let's activate cereal, it's been a while. And not, not, not like the breakfast cereal, just cereal. Um, then we hit the sectoid. Yeah, let's just fire at some sectoids. There we go. Blam on the first one. And that was even a free action. We can reload. Then we fire at the next sectoid from all the way in the back. This is just awesome. And there goes another one. The damage is pretty low. Because 8 is actually the lowest I can do with this weapon. Um, then we have... Ah, we have another sector, but he's pretty... 
pretty protected there. So let's just fire at that muton. There we go. No need to deal with that anymore. And then I'm going to try and kill that, uh, that other sectoid. 78%. It's not the best, but look at that distance through the window. <laughs> I would have loved to follow that bullet. Um, and then we need to reload again. I think we have like one more free reload with Erica. Uh, and we have another mutant to fire at. So here we go. Blammo. Oh, and that even kills it. But a critical. By the numbers indeed, and that's the final target she could hit. Because everybody else just, yeah, just died. I should probably get, if I can get Christina closer to over here. I might be able to fan fire the, the Archon. 72%, I'm going to take it. A triple miss with 72% chance. Okay. Um, definitely trying the shotgun blast then. Rapid fire or not? Um, you know what? Grapple. Grapple. Grapple to over here. Throwing the hook. That should improve our uh, hit chances immensely. And then we're definitely doing rapid fire. I want to get rid of this Archon. So, one. That was a dodge. God damn it, we're not going to be able to kill it now. And that's ten. Okay, do we still have a shot from something? We have Jacqueline, uh, but Jacqueline can't really go into cover. Although this is cover and she should be able to spot him through the window. Any shot might help. 77% chance, which is pretty good. She, that should kill it. There we go. It was dodged again. Those Archons have a really, really high dodge stat. But there we go. Everything is dead. Moving further. So according to my calculations, there should only be four enemies left. But we haven't seen a Sectopod and we haven't seen an Andromedon. So I feel like that might last pod could be two Sectopods and two Andromedons, which is ridiculous. But that also means that we need to carefully move forward. So we can get our abilities back as well, because uh, most of our abilities are going to be really, really handy here. And we do get movement, okay. We're on Overwatch with everybody. And we get two Mutons and two Andromedons, I think. But everybody's on Overwatch. So we might get a few nice hits. So that's a full hit on one of the Mutons. And apparently the rest of the aliens just blinked out of existence. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah. So I kind of miscounted by one. But not, not much. So that's two Andromedons. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah, a sectop Sectopod. That's not gonna do much, is it? Six damage, it's, it's something. Yeah, because the Dark Law ignores armor. Okay. Well then. Um, I was kind of moving through the building. So we're not in the best of positions. And they spotted us. We didn't spot them. So that's going to be interesting as well. Um, I think I can do a rupture shot. That's going to be with the sniper rifle probably. I could probably fan fire the sector pot to death with Christina on her own. Because the Dark Claw ignores armor. If I put it over here. This is ridiculous but... If I put it over here, she can probably spot everybody. I can then uh, lightning hands the sector bolt. And then do face off to... Well, either way at the health of pretty much everything over here. So face off. Because even though we do fire damage and these guys don't take fire damage. Oh, that was a miss. That was another miss. Ah, I was at least hoping we could kill the Muton in the back. Okay. Definitely not the best position to be in. Um, crap, and we will only have one action with Jacqueline. Unless, unless I say fuck it. And I do like to say fuck it. So we're going to move Heidi closer. To somewhere over here. That's gonna be step one. 
move her out of the way of what's gonna happen. Because I think it's high time we actually use that Shred Storm Cannon. So, Shred Storm Cannon, straight through the wall behind me. Um, I think, oh, that's gonna take out Christina's R, uh, cover. Ah, uh, we just can't hit both of them. Because I would love to hit both of the Andromedons. So I think this, this, so we hit all three of them, is going to be the most interesting thing to do. So yeah, blast away. So that's going to be very dangerous because Justina is now out in the open. And I can't do anything about that. But I do have another bomb. I think I can fire that through here, right? Oh, God. Damn you. I was hoping to be able to fire a bit further along. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to get through the uh, abilities here. Saturation fire. How far does that reach? Basically the same thing. So either I completely focus on... This. Oh, that muton did die though. Kind of missed that. But uh, saturation fire... Because this isn't going to do... I could actually Saturation Fire over here. That's probably going to be better. Because that means the cover is going to go away. Yeah, let's try this. And that gives us more shredding on those two. Uh... There we go. We did miss the one in the back. But we did kill the front one. Okay. Okay. Then the Commander's Avatar. That Dimensional Rift. How far can we put that? Um... Come on. Yeah, there we go. That's all four of them in the Dimensional Rift. That's not something I even need to think about. Dimensional Rift. Boom. Ooh, and that kills the Sectopod. That kills the Sectopod. And we even get another action. So we could even use the Null Lens now as well if you want to. Um, is that going to kill that Andromedon? I think it might. Because uh, here comes energy beam. Boom. Yeah, there goes the Andromedon. Oh, that's, this is really, really good. Really, really good. Um, I could move up with... Because, yeah, that back Newton is also dead. So the only one that's still alive is that Andromedon. But the armor is a problem. We still have a few shots. And with Erika, we actually get a sniper rifle shot. I'm gonna dead eye. Dead eye 12 to 15, that should kill it. Well, kill it in its current state. There we go. Starting back up again. And we do get another shot because of that from above. Uh, it's not gonna be a dead eye shot, but it's gonna be enough to put it down to half health. Oh, and that was even a critical 13 damage. And we get another action. We get another action. We could actually finish this with Erica herself. Yeah, why not, they? She deserves this. She's been uh, really, really good in this uh, in this mission. And that's the final enemy, I think. Oh crap! What's going on now? 